Hey, as a mom of three kids, I understand the struggle of juggling different responsibilities and wearing many hats. Have you ever been there? Well, tell us about the challenges challenges that you had to overcome as female ministers uh, and leading all these wonderful ministries that you're doing. I'll be right back with amazing guests to continue this conversation about overcoming divine interruptions. Hey guys, uh, w- welcome back. I'm Sehi and this is the NWM Leadership Podcast. As you know, great leaders are lifelong learners. And I am so excited to learn together with you as I invite two of my amazing spirit-led uh, powerhouse women in the um, in America. So let's welcome Jalen and Cynthia. Jalen and Cynthia, where are you? There you go. There you are. I am so excited you're joining our conversation today. How are you guys doing? Wonderful. I'm doing great. Awesome. Awesome. So I know you guys know each other, but many of the viewers may not know you, which is the sad thing. Everybody should know Cynthia and Jalen. So tell us who you are. Just give a little bit of context. Um, You're called the ministry and where you're serving currently today. Jalen, why don't you start us off? Okay, I'm Jalen Sperry. Um, Like you said, I'm currently in Stillwater, Oklahoma, serving at Oklahoma State Chi Alpha. I'm working as a CMIT, so that's um, I'm going through an internship process to be um, credentialed and qualified to um, work as a missionary associate through Chi Alpha. Awesome, Cynthia. Yeah, and, and you know, she left out, she's an evangelist extraordinaire. She's just got such a powerful anointing to bring people together. Um, she's, mm. She was, when she was a student, one of the greatest inviters. And as a staff member um, with us at Oklahoma State University, you know, led so many outreaches to bring people to Jesus. So super proud of Jalen and her ministry and her call. And it's been wonderful watching it bloom. Um, I am Cynthia Dobbs. And uh, currently, my husband and I are pioneering, uh, re-pioneering. Chi Alpha in the Tulsa area. We're trying to approach it as a metro model Chi Alpha, so more than one campus, because Tulsa is a, um, as all as many big cities are, is a melting pot of cultures. Mm. And there's a lot of there are a lot of universities, um, 44,000 students, international students from 100 different countries. So lots of opportunity to reach students in the Tulsa area. I'm also the cross cultural missions resource specialist for Nat- Na- uh, National Chi Alpha which means that I help train and equip and empower our workers to reach uh, diverse people from different backgrounds, internationals, um, women, you know, uh, anyone Mm. that that doesn't look like us really. So. Wow. Fascinating. Wonderful resumes. Amazing experiences that you guys bring to the table. It almost seems like the women are thriving in the Chi Alpha world and widely accepted and respected and recognized uh, as leaders. Uh, uh, it's incredible to just hear your uh, story. So give us a little bit of tips. How are men and women partnering to reach this many nations and college campuses? I believe that a lot of ministers and pastors outside of the campus ministries can learn from your experiences. So how are you guys doing this so well? That's a good question, Sehi. Yeah. So for me, you know, I my first Kayafa experience, I was in a pioneering campus ministry. And so I was one of the very first students that was invited into being part of that Kayafa. So I didn't know really that, that you know, women did different jobs than men or even that internationals did different jobs than men or even the access problem was not really there because I was one of the pioneering members of the team. So we all did everything. So I just kind of got roped into it. And the culture, it was just easy and invitational because I think Mm. our leaders for the longest time have stewarded a culture of honor and respect for both genders, Uh, not necessarily making the men be like women or the women be like men, but like owning our ministerial call in in the way that the Lord has made us and and using it for our our strengths instead of our weaknesses. Mm -hmm. So I think um, also you know, kudos to the Kayafa men. I don't think they're very secure in their calling. 
and, and they don't feel mm -hmm. um, any need to close the doors. They, they are usually opening the doors for us in, in a lot of ways, sacrificially uh, giving up opportunities that they may perhaps have been invited to speak at something, but, but putting our name in instead of their own name. And, and my husband um, mm -hmm. is perhaps one of the greatest champions of that uh, in my life and, and yeah. especially in the lives of our staff that, that we have um, had at Chi Alpha for sure. So. Wow, fascinating. How about Jalen? Yeah, much like Cynthia, um, I came into Chi Alpha and it was already the culture. Like I wasn't in a pioneering effort, but I came in after Destry and Cynthia had kind of already like started, Chi, like restarted Chi Alpha at Oklahoma State. And it was just really a part of the culture that women and men were both in leadership within Chi Alpha. So the staff at mm -hmm. Oklahoma State, um, when Destry and Cynthia were, were here, was equally men and equally women. Um, so a large staff, about 11 people, or a large staff for Chi Alpha, about 11 people, and half men, half women. Wow. And I would say of that group, and it's still true today, um, even with Brandon Garrett here, uh, the director at Oklahoma State, the women in the room um, are, um, their, their voices are equally heard and equally mm. respected and equally valued. And the men in the room are willing to listen to what the women mm. have to say and not only listen, but like um, accept it and like want it. They, they desire to yeah. hear. They, I think they understand that um, as many people have said, uh, the, without women leading in the church, like we're doing the nation uh, and, and the world a disservice. So I think they mm. recognize that and they own it and um, allow for women to bloom and to blossom in. Uh, leadership roles yeah. within Chi Alpha. Wow. I thought it was very fascinating when you said when you came to Chi Alpha, it was already a culture. I mean, yes. so that kind of tells me as a, a pastor of a local church, and I believe that it will really speak to our audience too, um, that we have to be the culture maker, culture transformer. That's where it begins, right? It's not just starting mm -hmm. with a program or some training. Uh, as leaders, you get to transform the culture that reflects the kingdom and I also love what Cynthia said that men in Chi Alpha are secure in their calling and therefore they champion female colleagues. I mean, they're not doing it because, oh, yeah, let's just be culturally relevant, but they're doing it because, yeah, I believe that God calls both men and women. I'm secure in my own calling and I'm going to just do this with my peers, no matter the gender. So that was beautifully said. What well, Jalen I heard the story that you are preparing for a ministry credential. Congratulations. Thank that is you. a huge step at the moment. But you've uh, ministered along your husband for a while um, in your Chi Alpha ministry journey. But why did you decide to pursue your uh, ministry credential at this point? Okay, so it's a long story, but I will share it briefly. Yeah. Um, yeah. So... Yes, I had, I've had. i been ministering alongside my husband for a few years, and um, I had really been like thinking about getting my credentials and joining the internship program, but it, it never really made sense at the time, and this is why, because I was already doing the thing that I wanted to do afterwards, so it was like, why do I need to get my credentials? Why do I need to go through the internship to do what I'm already currently doing? But... Mm -hmm. um, I heard this quote and it changed the way I thought about it. The quote was, uh, wherever ambition is leading you, your pride will encourage you. And wherever the spirit leads you, humility will enable you. And for wow. me, yeah. And for me, like continuing to like do ministry without submitting to the process was nothing but prideful and ambitious. And by submitting to the process of getting my credentials and going through the internship, it had to be spirit led because it brought me, it, it humbled me and it brought me down to, um, you know, the core of the thing, like go, going through it and understanding, you know, the process and the submission and the whole thing. So that's why I decided now. And honestly, it's been an incredible journey so far. Like I'm a year and a half into the internship. I'm going through a two year internship currently and mm -hmm. going uh, through OSAM, the Oklahoma School of Ministry, to get my credentials. And while before doing it, I thought things were going great, and I thought that um, ministry was, um, you know, fruitful. It's been mm -hmm. funny to see how I've like 
taken a step back, not really been on the campus as much um, in order to take the classes and to do that kind of thing. But the Lord has blessed it and I've seen more fruit come out of it. So Mm, that's why. Wow, that is a great story of your journey. And I'm so glad that you say yes to this ministry. Well, I am not a Chi Alpha person, but I'm so fascinated about this ministry and, and you guys just really fully engaged and fully giving and investing in the next generation. So, but I believe with any leadership and with any ministry, there's ups and downs, right? So this is a moment of authenticity and transparency. So here's something. Question is, what are some of the unique victories and challenges you faced as a Chi Alpha missionary? Maybe it's maybe it's the personal challenges that you're going through right now in your season. So uh, Cynthia, why don't you start us off and we'll go to Jaylet. Yeah, I think uh, it it took me a little while to get my ministry legs, so to speak. And they're definitely not firm yet. You know, there's still a lot of stumbling to try to figure out what I'm supposed to do. And uh, I think when I was first a young minister, even in Kayafa, there's lots of question marks because, you know, men do it a certain way and I can't do it like they do. I don't sound like them. You know, they're examples Mm -hmm. of football you know i grew up in india i understand cricket i don't know how to do you know so so i i I understand that yeah right (laughs) it would be inauthentic for me to try and um take that mold of leadership and then apply it to myself right so there was Mm. there was a challenge there and of course i have an indian accent i am indian and um and and then there there was also you know this this opportunity gap right we we talk about this all the time and, and we really talk about it in the negative but, but I wonder if God sometimes allows for us to not um, experience opportunities immediately in order to steward some spiritual formation in us. For me, certainly that was the case. Uh, I think I looked at my brothers and it looked like it was easy for them. I don't necessarily think mm-hmm. that it was easy for them. It was, it was just my perception of it, you know, uh, being on yeah. the outside of the situation. Um, and so there, there may have been some, um, you know, regrets in the way I approach thing if I'm being com- approach things if I'm being completely mm-hmm. honest but but I got to a point where God was just so faithful and as I would go and share my regrets with the Lord you know what about this opportunity what about um you know the capacity to speak well or or the opportunity to speak or the opportunity to minister and the spirit just kept reminding me hey you know did man call you no I did mm-hmm. and and so I'm going to give you the opportunity and I had to rest in that. And there was perhaps like a like a period of uh, a year or so, year and a half, where I had to wrestle with this, this truth that I was called. And I was called by my father. And he will take care of my destiny. And, and I think sometimes when we lose sight of that, we start going to try and make opportunities for ourselves. And, um, you know, we read well-meaning leadership books that tell us to, you know, self-promote and, and make ourselves a certain thing. And we take away mm-hmm. from the the kingdom identity that the Lord has stamped us with. So I just began embracing who I am and just waiting on the Lord. And, and if I had a regret, I'll just take it to the Lord and say, God, you know, what about this? And, and then just wait. And I can't tell you mm-hmm. how that just changed my perspective because God hears our prayers and he values who we are. And if he has called us to something, he has certainly made a way. He's, he calls himself yeah. the, the God who prepares our way, right? And so I just began yeah. trusting in him. And, and even that scripture, you know, it, that says that he will fulfill all his purposes concerning us, right? And so just resting the fact that I just need to say yes to Jesus and taking care of my destiny and producing opportunities for me is not my job. It's his saying yes to the mm-hmm. open doors that he um, places in front of me is my job. And then to diligently work mm-hmm. so that I, I am worthy of my father's trust when I enter those doors, you know, so it, it kind of took, I think that, that that's how I approached maybe the opportunity challenge, I would say. And then there's, of course, challenges mm-hmm. of motherhood and, and, you know, being a wife in ministry and making sure that you support your staff, you support your husband, uh, making sure that you put the right person for the right job in, in front of the audience, whatever that audience may be. And even for us women, sometimes it means saying no to an opportunity and inviting someone else in our team to take the space. And not being worried about gender in that case, but just being worried about who God is appointing for that specific opportunity and then giving them space and room to thrive in that and blessing them while they do that has been another thing I've had to learn. 
Wow, great reflection. That's so good. Even saying no to the right things. That's so good. Jalen, what are some of the victories and challenges you face as a Chi Alpha missionary in your journey? Okay, so I um, had an interesting story of how I was like called into ministry in Chi Alpha. And so I think the challenge in itself, like becoming a missionary is, or initially for me was viewing it as a sacrifice. Like I viewed Mm -hmm. missionary life and being um, and and setting down like parts of my future, like um, ambitions as a sacrifice. And really it's not a sacrifice. It's a, it's an opportunity like Cynthia said. And I think that paradigm shift uh, ultimately like changed how, how I view uh, the challenges and the opportunities as well and the victories as well. So like, I would initially I would be like, Lord, um, I quit PT school because like I was pursuing like grad school and now I'm like being a missionary for you. Like I deserve to be fruitful. That's not true. Um, And then I was like, Lord, um, now I'm like thriving in ministry and now I'm having a kid like I've sacrificed Mm. all this time to be a missionary and now I have to set that down to. Um, be a mother and also not true both things were opportunities that the Lord like blessed me with and so I think um, that would that would be a challenge and a victory all in the same time like so Mm -hmm. I think it all just like kind of seamlessly like works together as like the things that we are challenged in in the moment ultimately become our victories. Mm, wow, that is so good. I think a lot of us that are listening to your story and even Cynthia as a motherhood, you know, I think we can relate to that. You know, I mean, obviously marriage is a blessing from God, right? Children yes. are blessings from God, but you see that as sometimes as a stumbling block to your calling. But I love it how you said it, that those are really uh, opportunities, also the opportunities for growth. And it's really a divine interruption. God divinely came and interrupted our lives before greater purpose. And, and that's also a calling. Like you said, you know, motherhood yeah. is a calling. Pastoral ministry is a calling. And so beautifully said, uh, I want to ask Cynthia this question. So because you've been in this world for a while and it's OK, be biased all you want to. <laughs> Why should anybody consider being part of Kayafa or be a Kayafa missionary as opposed to other ministry opportunities? Oh, my gosh. You're asking me the question that could land me in trouble. But, you know, you, you told me that. To be honest, I'm going to. Just go for it. Yeah. Yes, I think I will. <laughs> you know, here's my recruitment plug for Kayafa. But anyway, um, I think. One of the greatest things I learned in my Kayapa journey is that being a Christian means that I can't just sit on a pew and worship Jesus on Sunday morning and then go back home and have a good life and, you know, just by the skin of my neck, make it into heaven. That is not God's purpose for me. God's purpose for me Mm. is to thrive. God's purpose for me is to join him in this, you know, epic battle between good and evil where I'm fighting Uh, with the good guys trying to bring more of God's lost sons and daughters back into the kingdom and relationship with God. So growing up as a Christian in India, I had a very consumer mindset. You know, I had a very, um, do I like the pastor's message? You know, is the worship good today? So on and so forth. And it turns out that's not what Christianity is about. And if I had not Mm. had Chi Alpha in my life, man, I would have not gotten that message as thoroughly as I do right now. Because the one thing that Chi Alpha does well is discipleship. And in, in discipleship, uh, the way I look at it is spiritual parenting. And, and they take you as a immature uh, spiritual uh, being, and then they help you mature in the faith, teach you spiritual disciplines, you know, um, mm. not just have good conversations over coffee, but push back on some of the sin nature that you are displaying uh, with impunity mm. and, and try and yeah. um, help you grow out of it. So Kayafa does discipleship so well. And, and I also think as a woman in, in as a woman who grew up in India, I saw a lot of models for good leadership in women. Uh, my mom was a judge. My grandmother was a doctor. So I've, I've been surrounded with women leaders, but I didn't really see a woman pastor or I, I didn't really see a woman in the church who led and, and was looked up to as the leader, you know, and, and they had a very 
and and don't get me wrong, submission is not a bad thing. Submission is a wonderful thing. It's it's coming under kingdom authority, but they were submissive perhaps in a in a in a wrong way, if that makes sense. Um, right. Not in a kingdom mm-hmm. way. And and Kayafa really allowed for me to embrace um, the authentic calling that is on my life and and do it right. with the kingdom structure. So they encourage the good mm-hmm. things and then kind of push back on the bad things all while tending to my soul and, and helping me grow towards the Lord. So I think that's why, you know, any minister, I think if you're, if you're a young woman minister or maybe even a young woman in college, thinking about what Jesus may be calling you to do, go find your local Kayapa yeah. chapter. And, and yeah. we've got chapters all over the country, even overseas and connect with the Kayapa pastor, get in a small group and, and submit right. yourself to some mentorship within that small group. You will thrive in Jesus. It really helped me mm. kind of sharpen the arrowhead of my calling. Um, and I don't know mm. if I could have done that in, in just a, a church setting. I think some of our churches do discipleship really well, but there's something so powerful mm. about being in the same room with your peers where all of you are asking yeah. the same questions and are encouraging one another to, to take the hill for the Lord. Wow. Okay. I'm going to sign up to be a Chi Alpha missionary now. <laughs> you convinced me. <laughs> you know, I, I know that there are a lot of Chi Alpha missionaries out there. Hey, if you are one of them, why don't you do a heart and don't just like it do click on that heart and show your support for your peers kayafa kayafa peeps i think that's going to really encourage one another uh jaylen i have a final question for you i just love this time together i know that you're going through a lot of changes as a motherhood and all of this and getting ready for the credentialing and stuff uh, but it's going to be a journey right so where do you see yourself from five to 10 years from now? Uh, it might be a silly question. Like, I don't even know what's going to happen tomorrow, right? <laughs> but um, if you could choose and plan your future for, uh, to honor God through your leadership and platform and voice, where would you like to be in five to 10 years? Because he, this is a why I'm asking. Somebody may be listening to this video and say, I want to invest in Jalen. Oh, so, okay. Or people like Jalen, right? So yes. tell us, where would you like to be? Okay, so that is a tough question because, like, when I started, when I finished college and became a Chi Alpha missionary, I had my life planned. Or even before I became a Chi Alpha missionary, as soon as I got out of college, I had my life planned. And I didn't submit to the Lord. Uh, I didn't make him the Lord. I didn't say yes to whatever he wanted. I was making my own plans. Um, And so I am very slow to make plans for myself now. Mm. Um, I have learned one thing in all of these like divine interruptions that you keep talking about. Um, When I planned to go to grad school, didn't happen. Had to stop that. When I planned to pursue further ministry and and, um, be a full-time Chi Alpha missionary. I had a baby and um, then he was a year old and I was like, okay, he's going to daycare. I'm back at it, going full full strong, get pregnant with my second kid. Um, He is a blessing, but it was a definite divine interruption. So the one thing in all of that that I've learned is my plans are significantly weaker than the Lord's plans mm-hmm. for my life. That's good. And, and so what I'm focusing on currently, while I do have goals and, and plans for the future, and I hope it involves Chi Alpha um, wholeheartedly, okay. um, there's one thing I know that I will be following Jesus and I will be making disciples and um, I will be focusing on daily obedience and hearing from the Lord and having him direct mm. my path. So I'm not really sure where I'll be in five to 10 years. <laughs> I think that's the best answer that I've ever heard, that you're right? going to be obedient Do you see why I love to the call her? of God. <laughs> I know. And this is a product of Kaya Alpha Ministry. I am so proud of for our you guys and the AG legacy and the Kaya Alpha leaders and student leaders and the people that you're working with. Thank you, Cynthia and Jalen, for your time. And I know I can talk forever with you <laughs> about reaching people and lost souls. But thank you for your obedience. Seriously, I, I really cherish you as sisters in Christ. But your leadership really inspire me to be better me. So God bless you. I hope the best for you and reach all nations as, as God leads you. God bless. Thank you, Sehi. It was wonderful to be part Thank of this. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you soon. Oh my gosh, guys. Did you hear their stories? 
I feel really pumped spiritually. I'm like ready to just move forward and love God and just continue to walk this journey of obedience, no matter what happens in our lives. Because believe me, those divine interruptions will happen no matter which season of your life you're going to be in. But their stories are such a great reminder that God will continue to use you. If you got married, God's going to use you. If you had a first child, God's going to use you. If you have a fifth child, God's going to use you. So let's just continue to obey God and just be faithful in that journey. Hey, stay plugged in. Uh, we want to just get to know you and champion you through all these podcasts and training resources. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at AG Women Ministers. And I look forward to growing together and learning together with you. God bless and we love you. We'll see you back.